While former President Obama tries to rally Democrats, Donald Trump's diehard supporters are still clinging to his every word, even if most of those words are lies. So what is it like to attend a Trump rally post-January 6th? I have a few thoughts, uh, of course, but uh, to get a real perspective on this, let's go to The uh, Daily Show's Jordan Klepper. Uh, he went to Iowa to find out. Take a watch. Take a listen. Watch. My last Trump rally was January 6th. Uh, have you seen any gallows go up anywhere? Nope. <laughs> Do you think Mike Pence will show up here today, or does he not want to hang? Oh, I think he would be afraid to show up here today. Yeah, why is that? Because he was a coward. Oh. He didn't do the right thing, that's why. Or because these people tried to kill him. You know, people say, oh, Trumps are, that's a cult, blah, blah, blah. But I feel like cult is such a negative word. We are not a cult. We are a group of Americans that love our country and We're want it back. Are there any old hits or things you hope he goes back to? Um, oh gosh, I feel like whatever he spews out of his mouth, I just love it. Um, <laughs> I just love... It doesn't matter what he says? Yeah, we're like, gonna love I, it. We're I, gonna love being here. We're gonna love hearing what he has to say. But this isn't a cult. No, I don't think so. Joining me now is the man who bravely travels to the MAGAverse and back, contributor for The Daily Show, the great Jordan Klepper. Jordan, uh, so good to have you back. Thanks so much. Uh, we just heard they don't think it's a cult, but when you were uh, just walking around, uh, we saw some very weird stuff, uh, not the least of which was a flag with Trump riding a velociraptor firing a machine gun. Um, that seems kind of cult-like. Uh, what else were you seeing at this rally? Well, definitely there, there was the new merch. Uh, I've been to enough of these where Donald Trump on a velociraptor with an AR is no longer that surprising. Uh, there were, though, quite a few Confederate flags, which was strange in Des Moines. There was a flag that was an American flag with a hand that came down lifting it, and behind it was a Confederate flag. Uh, and everybody was, was dressed to the nines to stand uh, in a field for up to 12 hours to listen to the man speak. I, I even saw someone uh, selling women's pee funnels so that if people didn't want to leave their space in line to go use the restroom, they could they could urinate right there. Which to me, when you're peeing in a field waiting for the leader to speak, you yeah. may be closer to a cult than you think. Yeah, that that's commitment um, to say the least. Um, and a lot of these supporters refuse to believe Trump had anything to do with the violence on January 6th. They, they try to blame the so-called deep state. I, and I've seen them go down this rabbit hole before, but I have to play uh, this interview you got with, with one gentleman because the logic here makes my head spin and I, I'm still struggling with it to this day. <laughs> Let's watch. But I don't believe that it was people like me and people like you see over there in that crowd that did it. Who, who was behind? FBI, CIA, Antifa were used. Other, other groups like that. It seemed like a lot of them were going into the Capitol to attack Nancy Pelosi and perhaps Who? hang. Who? What's that? Who? Which one? The one with the bullhorns? He's not a Trump supporter. I don't care what his resume says. He's not a Trump supporter. In fact, do you remember the picture of the plane in Afghanistan with all the people running next to it? That was a balloon plane. If you look at the pictures of the real plane, and there's pieces that are missing from the real plane to that plane. So you're saying there's a conspiracy around the Afghanistan withdrawal? No, I'm saying that there was one guy there who ran. It's the only guy who turned to the camera and waved his hands. Do y'all remember that? Everybody remember that? He's the guy with the horns on his hat. He was in Afghanistan? Yes, go look at the pictures. I think he's in jail right now. No, that's what they tell Who's going to? Are we going to find pictures of like the horn guy in like the background of old Civil War photos or in paintings of the Revolutionary I'm War? I'm just time? telling you the picture looks just like it. Wow. I mean, some of these folks have gone so far down the rabbit hole, I think they're going to reach the Earth's core. Uh, I mean, that is just an incredible, you know, confluence of events that this guy is putting together. I, Help us make sense of it. Well, I, I will say I, w I was ready for some disinformation and thought the conversation was going to be mostly about whether or not Trump won the election. I think what I was surprised by, that that's already been decided by that group. I think it was sort of the misinformation around January 6th that was kind of shocking to me. Uh, and there is no one clear narrative. Most of the people we talked to, uh, when we brought up January 6th, they pointed to the CIA, the FBI. Some people pointed to it being... Uh, an important day where people stood up and did the right thing, but the people who did bad things weren't the people who were on their side. Uh, some folks didn't believe it happened at all. Like, I think the one unifying theory is, is a lack of accountability 
for the words that are being said and the actions that are being taken. So th that that shocked me that that the pace we're going, if, if Donald Trump decides to run for office, we're not going to be debating what happened on January 6th. I think we're going to be debating whether January 6th exists on the Gregorian calendar or not. Right. I mean, you know, to put that together with Afghanistan is just, it's remarkable. Um, there, there have been a lot of questions about what would become of the a QAnon conspiracy group uh, after Trump's uh, loss, uh, but you you found plenty of uh, QAnon supporters at this rally. I mean, they're they're a fixture at Trump. I remember seeing them all the way back in 2018. But uh, let's take a look at an exchange that you had just recently. Is that a Q? Yeah. Are you a Q supporter? Certainly. Wasn't Q's whole thing that Trump would be reinstated as president? He's never left. There's no doubt in my mind. 150,000 percent that he's still president of the United States? Really? Does he still hold the powers of the presidency? Well, he's been flying around the world on Air Force One. It says something. I thought Joe Biden's technically on Air Force One. No. So they're, they're faking it? Yeah, it's, it's not even a presidency. Who is running the government right now? President Trump. He's running the government? And the military. And he's running the military. So we should blame him for what happened in Afghanistan? No. But it's still his fault. It's way beyond my understanding. I don't. I don't. I, I, Thank you for talking to me, George. Enjoy seeing President, current President Trump. I, I, I my head hurts. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm speechless, Jordan. Um, I, I, help, help me out here. Do you run into people at these rallies? Because I, I found my experience going to to the rallies, and I thought it was the, the best way to understand the Trump movement in this country was to go to the rallies. And do you run into people who sort of, you know, with a wink and a nod, acknowledge that a lot of this stuff is just bull crap? Or, I mean, do you get the sense that this is even more across the board, the, the belief in these well, types of crazy conspiracy theories? I will say, I, I've only been back to this, this, this one now. This is the first one since January 6th. Uh, this one felt different than the ones prior to that. Like, occasionally, yeah, you would run into people who, like, are attending a rally because rallies are fun. It's the big circus that comes into town. It's the giant fair, so people show up. You run into some people who understand some of the chaos and might not be Q believers, wouldn't be caught wearing a Q hat, uh, and might talk some of the talking points but want to just be there and be a part of it. I was... Again, I was surprised at this one where I was not running into those people. It, it felt like already, like the Q emblems that we saw, whether or not people were actually attempting to follow Q, it at least was a new symbol that just meant we don't believe the information you're telling us. And almost everyone we talked to was a member and all into that group. So, so, so again, this is the first time out for us, and you know the elections. A thousand days away, he hasn't even announced that he's running yet. But but already, it's it's not just people who are happy to be there and and cosplaying for the fun of it. People seem to already be that much further along on the the information and the misinformation train. And, and Jordan, I know you, you work for a comedy show. I mean that that is the point is to to make us laugh, uh, laugh at ourselves and so on. But I, I mean, I, I see, do see this as important journalism, what you're doing and going out there. Uh, I wonder if you see it that way. Why do you personally want to go out and talk to these folks and, and, and hear what they're saying, as bonkers as it sounds sometimes? Do you think there's a point well, to I, it? I, <laughs> well, I think it's always, one, I think it's always important to engage with people on the ideas that are out there. Uh, you, you hear a lot about it on the news, but until you go and see what actually people believe face to face, uh, you don't really know what is happening out in quote unquote, say, real America. But for me, I, I'm, I'm always baffled by the logic. I think something you often saw in the uh, Trump administration is the, the inability for people to follow up on Trump so that he could throw something big out there and never have the follow up question to actually walk through the logic. And so here, for me, it's important to engage in conversations with people with an attempt to actually understand. And more often than not, what you see is people haven't thought through all of these steps. And, and these pieces are rife with contradiction. But I often say that like contradiction is revealing of the lie that you tell yourself. And that, I think, is often what you see in these pieces. And it has to be revealed. I mean, I think it's, it's doing such a service to reveal these sorts of exchanges. Uh, and, and Jordan Klepper, as always, thank you so much for being with us. We literally could do this all day long. And I know this because I've been out there and covered this stuff myself. Uh, but thanks so much, Jordan, for being with us. We appreciate it.
Thanks, Jim.